Okay, now we're going to demonstrate how to make a gyratory specimen. Whenever you're making gyratory specimens for actual testing, you always make two. I'm just going to demonstrate how to make one here for you. This is what's called the Brovold gyratory compactor, manufactured by Pine Instrument. It looks a little bit different than a lot of them. This is a portable one. Uh, there are various manufacturers of these devices. They look very different. Uh, DOT has big Troxlers. There are various other portable ones out there. They all, however, work basically the same. It's just a matter of which buttons you push. That will be up to you to figure out when you see the machines you actually work with. So what I'm going to do here is show you how to actually load this into the gyratory compactor. The gyratory compactor then takes care of everything once you start it. It knows the correct pressure to apply, the correct angle to apply to the molds, and the correct number of gyrations which you preset. So, first thing we need is a mold. Molds need to have been in the oven at 275 degrees. You have to put a paper in the bottom so that the asphalt material doesn't stick to the plates. And with this particular device, it's actually easier to load the mold once it's been placed in the gyratory compactor. Now, these molds are very heavy. Slip the mold down into the gyratory compactor. In this case, we have to. Move it a little bit clockwise until it seats itself. A little collar we can put on here to facilitate transferring the material in. I have a sample here. It's at 275 degrees. And we just pour this into the mold. If you remember, we weighed up approximately 4,700 grams of material. Usually when you pour it in like that, it's all kind of laying against one side of the mold. I'm just going to level it out a little bit in the mold. We're not trying to do any compaction here, just level it. Now we put the top paper in. So we're going to have to put a plate on top here. With this particular device, it has a special plate. You'll notice it's beveled. One on the bottom is sitting like this, the one that goes on the top is sitting like that with the bevel up. The flat side always goes towards the sample. Gently lower that into the sample, snap off the magnet. Swing the head around and drop it into place. You'll notice these ears line up with these hold downs. Put all the hold downs on because this has got a hydraulic ram that comes up from underneath and applies 600 kilopascals of pressure. So at the start, you can hear the motor come on. Now, ram is coming up. Seems to hit about 600 there for pressure. You'll hear it start to gyrate. All that's going on there is that the mold is wobbling. It's not spinning, it's simply wobbling. You can see the display is counting the gyrations showing the height at every gyration. If it hits 50, it will shut itself off. There we go. Then removes the angle. 
and then it removes the pressure. Once the pressure is back to zero, now we can unload it. Top plate out. Now we extrude the specimen from the mold. To do that, we simply put this back on. All this is for is to hold the mold down as it presses the sample out. The ram comes up, pushes it out of the mold. Now the head is out of the way. The mold is held down. Remove the top paper. Don't want to disturb the specimen. I discourage everybody from just trying to grab these because sometimes these specimens are still hot, but could be very tender. We develop this little wrap that you can kind of wrap around the specimen distributing the pressure all the way around and pick it up. Take off the bottom paper. Find a flat spot to set it. A lot of people have cooling equipment with fans and what have you to facilitate cooling these off as quickly as possible. And they have fans that blow up or down or sideways. You also need to identify it if you're actually working out in the field, in the lab, you need to have a system for identifying your gyratory specimens because you're going to end up with a bunch of them sitting around. You can't throw these away until the lot has been accepted by the Iowa DOT lab. So you have to have some sort of numbering system to keep track of these. Uh, if it were, say, report number five, the fifth day, you might put a five, and then what, what specimen for the day that it is, in this case, 5-1.